will hit. That's great. So welcome. Uh, this is um, the session two of our uh, internship work workshop. So very happy to have a lot of you here. Um, just going to admit a few more people. There we go. Um, so today's workshop is really on um, uh, focusing on developing your tools, as Amy was beginning to share with you some kind of uh, insights into how best to do that. Um, I am Hefti Monseca. I um, lead up the uh, internship work stream for Anaya. So happy to be here. Um, I think the main three objectives, and Amy's going to dig into this um, much more detail, but really it's about resume writing, cover letter, and elevator pitches. So how do you kind of tackle those three big ones as you um, start to write up and approach your internships? Uh, so certainly a very information-rich session. Uh, 60 minutes is, is not much time to get into a lot of details, but we have a plan to follow up for those of you who have more questions um, uh, after this. Um, so um, a few housekeeping rules before we get in. Um, the session, as you just noted, is being recorded. So we're going to post this to the ATF Internship Resources page. We'll send you a link at the end uh, so you have a reminder to where to access that. Uh, if you have any questions during the session, feel free to type them into the chat. Um, we, you know, or raise your hand. We want this to be an interactive session, so it's certainly welcome any questions um, as we go along. And I know uh, Amy is going to pause and, and take your questions as well. So, uh, but uh, while we're doing the recording, since this is being recorded, you know, I appreciate if you can put yourself on mute so we don't have any extraneous noises. I have. Um, dismiss my dog out of the room so we don't get any barking in the background. Um, so with that, I'm just going to hand it over to Amy. Um, Amy, if you want to move to the second slide. Uh, Amy, I introduced her the last time, but just wanted to give a quick uh, refresh. Uh, she is someone who has spent many years uh, doing um, coaching uh, executives on, on uh, exactly these things, resume writing, how do you pitch yourself, elevator pitch, pitches, um, and just going through their own professional career. So we're excited to have her. And thank you, Amy, for uh, taking time out of your day to a uh, weekend, especially to do this uh, for us. So uh, with that, um, Amy, I will hand it over to you. Okay, thank you, Hapsi. Um, It's my pleasure to be here with everybody. And um, we have a, a pretty aggressive agenda for today. Again, I'm, I'm going to touch about um, kind of general high concepts about how to um, uh, go into each of these areas. Your, which These are your main tools for getting an internship or a job, um, a resume, a cover letter, and an elevator pitch that are all kind of tied together. And these are really the going to be the foundations of um, what you're going to use to build your um, interview strategy too, and that's something we're going to talk about next time. But the, what you consider here are going to be important, and they're going to be all linked to um, your interview strategy. Um, and then networking skills and process mechanics are a little bit I want to give you a preview into as well. And if you joined us um, earlier, I was telling Lana a little bit about um, how I'm going to be addressing some big concepts here, but not really specifically, you know, how to lay out a cover letter on a page or specifically how to draw things from your resume into a cover letter, et cetera. Um, but there will be follow-up opportunity for that. So I hope that you um, enjoy this at a high level and that to the extent that I can be helpful at a, at a next level, we'll talk about, um, about that. But in the meanwhile, I do want to try to make this as interactive as possible. And I do want to address anything specific. So I encourage you to use the chat box, which I have open on my screen to address anything as I'm talking. I tend to talk kind of fast. You're welcome to tell me to slow down or repeat something. Um, and, um, and I think that's it. Um, uh, I just covered, as I often do, um, sometimes what I would, what's on the next slide. Um, there's going to be tutorials and worksheets. I encourage everybody to go to my website, which is jobcoachamy.com, where there are a number of free resources, um, even with before I go into any of this. Um, um, and um, again, there, there will be more tactics. Um, I would like to ask everybody if they have any specific objectives into the um, right now that they're bringing in to this. Um, session with them, if they can put them in the chat box, I'll work to address them as they have time. So specifically, if you're looking in a particular field, which I think I got a sense of last time, but if you'd like to remind me, um, if there's anything um, uh, that you're look that, you know, an internship has um, specifically is going to ask of you anything like that, I'm happy to address that. Okay. 
All right, so um, here's a couple things that are important to know about resumes. Um, uh, one of the key things is you're gonna hear about is about keywords. And a lot of companies, both small and large, are using ocular readers or artificial intelligence system to get you past a first pass. It's not gonna be human eyes that see your resume at the first time. And this is true even for internships, I'm afraid. It's bled down into all aspects of the hiring system. Um, and what keywords are, are the um, items that are in a job description that they are going to be looking for in your resume. So if you know, if you've ever looked at a job description or an internship description, they're generally in three parts. They'll generally tell you a little bit about the company, they'll tell you a little bit about the role, and then they'll tell you a little bit about what they're looking for specifically in you. So for example, if they are looking for somebody with lab experience, if they're looking for somebody who knows Python, if they're looking for somebody who is fluent in Spanish, those will be the kinds of keywords that you wanna pick up from the job description and input into your resume. So those are the kinds of things that, again, um, you can template some of your resume and your cover letter, but keywords are the ones you wanna focus on. And the ones that are most important to you are the ones that you wanna focus on on your resume and you wanna to try to match them um, specifically to job descriptions a little bit as you get into them. The other really important thing to know about a resume is that the average recruiter looks at it for six seconds. They actually did studies with looking at eyes, the way eyes look at things. And you basically have six seconds to get your story across. Now, one of the most effective tools that I like to use in doing this is to use a story at the top. And I put some examples of that. So, biomechanical engineering major with a strong work ethic, excellent lab skills, and experience analyzing data work. It's pretty simple, but maybe that applies to you. It would tell your story pretty quickly without somebody having to look through what did you do in the summers? What did you do for school? What did you do in high school? Another one, highly quantitative analytical mathematics major with experience doing project development software collaboratively. That's, I think that came from college. Don't feel bad if those intimidate you, but I think you get the point. It's not, doesn't make sense to make them work for a summary and you should have one anyway. That's what, you know, you should be able to say in a second or two, a uh, sentence or two, what it is you're about and what you're looking for. So with that, um, a couple other basic, basic things. When you submit a file with a resume or a resume and cover letter, or even maybe an essay that you've been asked to write, you wanna submit it for the company's convenience and not for yours. For example, if you submit it as um, uh, Smith and it's fall, spring 2022, no one's gonna be able to find it if they're gonna say, who's that kid that interviewed from UMass Boston who wanted to be a lab intern? It's gonna be kind of hard. So what you wanna do is you wanna put your last name, you wanna put the name of the position, and oftentimes there's a job, job code. So that's kind of a mechanic that can give you an edge on other candidates. Another thing, someone may check your digital profile to see that you're genuinely interested in the industry. One of the themes that I talked about earlier, if you, if you happen to get on earlier, but if you didn't, you're gonna hear me say it a lot, is that one of the major themes is that people wanna know that if they give you this job, that you are genuinely interested in staying in it, in learning from it, and in committing to it. So they wanna know for sure that if you say, I really wanna learn about how to become an industrial engineer and help to design um, biomechanical um, uh, lab sites, they wanna know that on your LinkedIn, you're following those kinds of groups, you're following those kinds of companies, you are definitely showing an interest in those kinds of things. And LinkedIn, by the way, we'll talk about is kind of the, the lingua franca of all business. So you are gonna to wanna to put your resume up there once you get it. But someone can check your digital profile to see that you're genuine about what you're claiming to be. So you wanna make sure that that sentence you write matches what you can someone can look at on your digital profile. Yeah. And Amy, no, there's a quick, quick question. I'm just going to clarify it because I know I'm trying to think of it from an internship perspective. You know, obviously they're kind of pre-job market. They're still in the process of figuring out what we want to do when we graduate. But would that be something that would be required as much, or is it what 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 changes if it's if this, it's more of an internship perspective? 
It, it doesn't. So for okay. example, um, I helped a few um, uh, scholars this past few weeks with a um, resume for a paid internship this spring at MIT Publishing. And there were over 100 applicants for that position, all for undergrads. Um, it's $15 an hour, 10 to 20 hours a week, all remote, pretty really interesting, cool work. They're not really going to consider anybody who doesn't have a background in um, being interested in school news, you know, working for their school magazine, their school literary society, um, any kind of related to publishing. So if their resume is on LinkedIn, um, which it should be, then they should be following MIT Press and probably some other publishing houses or careers in publishing. It makes a difference at any level. Got it. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, another one, pretty calm, pretty simple, but have somebody else review it before you hit send. It's really worth the time. Um, spell check doesn't always get everything. You can stare at something for a really long time and not miss it. I follow this one myself. I've been doing this for 30 years. I'm definitely good to have another pair of eyes look at anything you send out. Um, another one, you need to present yourself as someone who can add value. A lot of first timers in the career market tend to feel like they have to say, here's me and I'm great. And they forget to say, here's me and here's how I'm going to be great for you. So I see a lot of resumes or cover letters come through that say, um, I think I can really thrive in your environment. No company wants to hear that. They want to hear, I think I can add value to your environment. So those are a couple of things to keep in mind. Also, set a date to stop tinkering. This is something that affects anybody from first-time internship seeker to CEO who's looking to change jobs. If you're going to need to get an, a, your resume in by January 1st, stop working on it by December 15th and start looking at the other things. You know, you get a minute, you go to the um, uh, diminishing re law of diminishing returns and a lot, of, it's easy to work on your resume. It's harder to do networking. It's harder to go find jobs. You need to set a date to stop tinkering. Um, okay, um, more specifically about resumes. You, a lot of people just present what they did, you know, worked in an office, coffee for some people, et cetera, et cetera. You don't want to uh, 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 present what you, uh, what you did. You want to present what you accomplished. So were you given goals that you met or exceeded? Maybe a metric you can use is that you completed your task with 100% accuracy. Maybe you can say that after a few months, you were given extra responsibilities. What you accomplished rather than what you were assigned is what's going to impress somebody. Also, be as quantitative as possible. It doesn't have to be a perfect number, but just an order of magnitude. So if you ran a campus, corpus, campus organization, excuse me, um, were there 20 people in it or were there 200? Um, if you were the treasurer, was the budget for $500 or was it for $5,000? It doesn't matter what exactly the number was. Um, if you're doing a project with a data set that you're running correlations on, is it a, um, a 5,000 record database or is it a 500,000 record database? Those are the kind of things that really can drive home a point and a lot of people miss out on saying, wow, something that is really impressive, but if you don't have the number in there, people don't use it. A couple more things. Resist the urge to choose fancy over clear. Um, as opposed to some college writing, you're not going to get any bonuses for big words. You want to be very, very clear. Um, and then another one, I think this is the last one for a resume, but um, there are three, job, three characteristics, regardless if they're in any job description. Um, every manager wants them. And if you can incorporate them into your resume in a way that says, here's a way that I use these in what I've done, either in school or in a community organization or in a job that I've had, it's gonna be really helpful to you. The first is attention to detail. So in my internship, I became the person who was everyone came to for proof and code. Because if you're someone on their team who has one more line of defense before something goes out the door or goes up the chain without a mistake, you're gonna be really valuable. Another one, the ability to juggle multiple priorities. So in every office, everywhere, in every job, there are three people that are going to come to one person and say, I need something in five minutes. That's from an admin to a CEO. And you have to be able to use the judgment 
and the timing and the maturity to say, okay, let me think through this. The most important one I'm gonna do in five minutes and the other two I'm gonna push back and say, I'll do them in the next half hour. So that one, if you've done that before, the most obvious one is waitressing, but there is plenty of other jobs and plenty of other instances that you guys have had to do that already. And I'm, I'm sure some of you are thinking of them and you can put those on your resume as well. And the last one, good organization skills. This doesn't come as a surprise probably. Um, having a good GPA is a sign of this. Having a good GPA and working a job as well is a great sign of this. If you're working as well, include how many hours per week. Um, or if you have another commitment of any sort, include how many hours per week. Um, every uh, boss, every colleague wants a colleague or an employee who when they come to their cube and, or their office and say, um, I need that number from third quarter, they don't want the person who says, oh, um, I've got it here somewhere, I'll get, back, I'll get it to you in 10 minutes. They want the person who does a few keystrokes and says, it's 587. That's someone who's well organized and that's how you want to present yourself as. Okay, I am going to stop sharing and I'm going to switch to a Word document and give you an example of a couple of resumes that I've done with clients. Um, this is in the wrong order, so bear with me. I'm going to first show you a low, what I call the low impact resume when it first came to me. Um, this is somebody that showed their college and their high school, great their professional experience. They worked summers doing customer service with people who came in, they helped them fill out applications at a, at a loan company. And then they did some work um, involved in, you know, pretty standard volunteer work, extracurricular work, good athlete, a lot of athlete stuff, athlete um, at high school, et cetera. Now, once we talked about things that this person had done, there was a lot of accomplishments. So first of all, we gave a summary sentence. This person is seeking an entry-level role in a life sciences related organization that will leverage research, project management, and team skills. So the team was from athletics, project management was from a thesis that she did that we found that we went into, same with the research. So this woman, it, it, you would never know from her resume, but she graduated with a 3 4 GPA after switching majors from chemistry, chemistry to biology required a double course load. Um, this senior, senior thesis that she did caused her to, to identify a link um, for global warming um, that developed a link between like a half degree rise in the Amazon and an exponential increase in the growth of in, types of insects. Now that's kind of cool once you got to the bottom of it, but the more important thing is she went through a ton of data and a ton of data records and learned a lot of computer algorithms to do this. That job, we actually presented it as working summers in a high pressure customer service intensive environment, working on small business loan products, pretty complex, learned to follow detailed procedures, a really good for an entry level job, develop relationships in high pressure situation and keep close attention to detail. Another theme that came out, natural leader, repeatedly voted captain, high school athletic captain of multiple sports teams. So we sort of took out the themes that were presented in a way that were not clear, and then it became much more impactful. And then some of the other things fell out of that in the same way, but, but really in the first six seconds, you got a chance to see all of her, um, all of the things that she did that were really kind of amazing. So I hope you can see that that was a much more powerful way and if you only have six seconds that you can get at it more. Amy, um, I was going to I was just going to um, interject there that what I loved about the example the high impact example that you shared is that the um, kind of summary at the top um, the storytelling um, matches and aligns with the accomplishments that they were highlighted right so yep, yeah. if, you're, if you're applying for different types of positions to be mindful of how those things need to kind of uh, hang together. So, you know, the accomplishments might change if you're, if the position is slightly different or what you're looking for is slightly different. So yeah. And, in and, mind. yeah. 
And actually um, that woman got a great role in a medical software company and all that work she did in biology paid off in a way and all that and all that detailed and project management work paid off in a way that we were able to develop a really strong interview strategy for her. And because she had all these chemistry and biology classrooms, she knew all the medical terms, et cetera, that were going to be used in this medical software. So she got a really fabulous job and she's, she's, since left it and doing um, doing great at a um, at a business school right now. So anyway, you. cover letter. It's gonna be. I'm gonna pick up the pace a little bit, and we're gonna go a little bit um, a little bit more quickly. It's a little less intense. Um, general things. Always send them if you can. They're another chance to make a good first impression um, and another chance to tell your story. If somebody will read one, send it. Um, you need to make them short. Otherwise, no one is going to read them. And I'm going to take say that again. You need to make them short. Otherwise, no one is going to read them. Do not spend an hour per internship writing a cover letter. We're going to, I'm going to show you how to templatize them and just spend a few minutes doing specifically why I want this job and why I want this company. Um, this point, like with your resume, we're going to do a cover letter template that is easily replicable, but looks like it's focused so you can get out a lot of them. It's a numbers game. I think that's on. I did the same thing. It's on the next slide. Um, this is the point I mentioned it was going through earlier. You want to do a little research for each application's cover letter so that the content is focused on the opportunity specifically and on the company specifically. And that's what can really set you apart from hundreds of other applicants is that, gee, this person really wants this. Um, so we should take a look at them. Um, generally, many companies, when you go on their site, say, oh, I'd love to work for them. They'll say, we don't have any openings right now, but you can send in your resume. It's fine. It's a general show of interest. It doesn't usually turn into anything, but go ahead and do it. It won't hurt you either. Um, once you've applied to a role, once you sent in that cover letter, resume, application, whatever they've asked you for, your goal is going to be to try to get your resume forwarded internally to the hiring manager or to a human resource um, department, any internal content as quickly as possible. And that's what the networking is for. And we'll touch base on that a little bit later. Um, and the last one, keep a record of everywhere you applied keep a record of the date, keep a record of the file you used and the documents you submitted and any context you made, an Excel spreadsheet, a Word table, a notebook, however you wanna do it. Do not be surprised if in six months you get a call from somebody and you're like, oh my God, I don't even know what that was. You're gonna to wanna to keep a record of this and especially of the names. Um, I'm gonna to switch to a sample cover letter now. Um, and anybody have any it's really hard to do this does any are, are people um taking notes are people enjoying this does it can anybody tell me anything in the chat room am i hitting yes hitting it's what very people? helpful okay all right good yes it is i'm taking okay. notes okay good um okay so here we have um the cover letter and both of these are template examples that i'm um i would recommend so um, I usually put a, uh, this in the header that, you know, your name and information in the header, um, because if it's in one file, then it can go right from the cover letter to the resume. That's a style thing for me. It's not a rule. Um, name of the individual, the date, um, always put a reference at the top, um, what your interest, what job you're applying to in this interest. Um, I think this is probably a general one. This, she was generally sending in. Um, I am going to graduate. I'm interested in a role. Um, the blue is everything that is not that is um, kind of not uh, templated. So thank you for reviewing my candidacy. Given the skills and experience I've gained to date, I'm confident I can quickly become an asset to your team. But but buyers of my team. And then she said um, these goal is to develop new cutting edge projects from identified surgical need. That's a that's a. Um, summary of some keywords that were on their website and in the job description. So that's specific to her with, with um, this particular Zimmer Biomet that she was applying to. So she has in here then a summary of what she has done, like her strongest accomplishment, and it, this is most closely linked to the, the role. And then um, she, this is pure template. 
So this template are kind of three, some three, we picked three of her strongest experiences and brought them forth or, or doubled plain and simple from her resume, but we brought them forth in a way that said, you know, this is what she did. This is why they're really relevant. And this is where she got her best experience. And if you had time to look through these, you would see that we're trying to get at the fact that she got um, experience working with highly detailed stuff where she needed to be very organized and she needed to juggle multiple priorities because she was either in a time intense environment or in a really highly collaborative environment. And then lastly, this blue sentence is also highlighted because that's the only part, other part that is not templated, that's specific. And this is also from um, the, I think this is either from the job description or just the splash sheet of the web page or something that said something about the company's cultural is that she loves doing collaborative work with teams and data and that she, her goal is to find a role with the leading orthopedics company, which Zimmer Biomed is. So most of it is templated and just these two sentences in blue that said, I'm focused on, I want this job at this company is what, um, is what can set her apart. So just a little bit of extra research. Um, this is somebody who was going to healthcare consulting. Um, uh, I think this, what is red is from his pure template and what is in blue was for his healthcare consulting template. So um, you can see that it's sort of a hybrid. These are for, this is about healthcare consulting. So I think he sent out about six of these. Um, your areas of expertise across diseases, diagnostic strategies is tool as well as your exclusive focus on healthcare makes your company stand out against amongst all other firms for me as I look to start my career. And these are the same things. This, don't be intimidated. This guy was a total rocket star. Um, he did some really, really cool things. But again, we just pulled them out and summarized them in, in English so that somebody who was going to, their six seconds would go directly to these bullet points. And you can see they're set off with a lot of space. They're set off with bullet points. Um, the time that they were done and where they were done is kind of self as well. So people don't have to look for that. And it still makes for a short letter. And it's not so much about him. It's about what he accomplished. Um, same thing, you know, at the bottom, the ending is very short, just unfortunate. I, I know what I want to do. I've had good experiences. And what I want to do now is exactly what you do. It would be a privilege, honor slash, you know, something I would love to do to work with you. And I hope to have the opportunity to further my candidacy with you. That's it. So it's very little yeah. about, you know, I've thought about this and that, and what I really want to do is work here. No, you're going to per se, yeah. I want to work here. Here's why. And then you're linking up with those keywords. And then you're going to present what you've done, what you have, you know, what makes you qualified for the role. And then you're going to end with, here's why, you know, I want this role specifically. Yeah, and I think and just from a, I guess, for those of, you know, as an intern, you know, a student, you don't have all the job experience, but it's still whatever relevant experience you can relate and pull out for that uh, application would be kind of the bulleted points. I mean, obviously, we don't have many different publications or organizations and, and things like that, which, you know, someday maybe you will, but I think the idea- That kid was a college senior. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> But no, for so for example, you know, I've did I've did a couple of intern roles and there was a there was a, some incredible community service, you know, and there yes, was exactly. you know working yes. with children, working as social justice, you know, the experience of working with social justice. There was a, a experience of being selected out of a group of peer, um, peers to be a leader. Um, you know, there's you know, leading organizations, leading initiatives, taking initiative. I mean. You guys are here. I've seen some of your resumes. You don't. You, there's not going to be anything skimpy on your resumes. Um, I've done yeah. since our last session. I've done a couple of scholar resumes, and they're incredible. Um, so I'm not too worried. It's going to be different content, but yeah. everybody who comes to me is like, "Oh, I don't have anything to put on my resume." Yes, you do. Um, I'm going to give you some questions to think about, um, to think about your bio and putting it all together which leads, this is actually a really good segue into your elevator pitch, um, which probably sounds like a little bit scary, not as scary as networking, I'm sure. And I'm gonna go over why that's not so scary either. But an elevator pitch, um, 
this network? No, okay. So um, networking is something you need to do once you get your resume in. It's, it's, it's the strongest tool you have. Um, networking makes a difference between um, whether or not your resume sits on a pile of 100 equally qualified or even less qualified people or gets sent to the top. And the best thing to do for networking, sorry, is to have an elevator pitch. So that's your that's your best tool for that. Um, and the reason why, we're gonna talk about networking in a second, but the reason why you wanna have an elevator pitch and you use it is that, and I want you, if you're writing down, I want you to write this down and I want you to remember this. Everyone has been where you are, everyone. Everyone on this call, Every CEO, every adult, every person you've ever met who is in a profession has been where you are and they want to help you. The trick is to make it easy for them. And the trick to making it easy for them is having a good elevator pitch. So what makes a good elevator pitch? The second bullet, you need to give people enough focus to give an idea of how they can help you, but not so much focus that they feel they have nothing to offer. So if I were to say to Hepsi, for example, um, you know, I'm just getting out of school with a degree in marketing and I really want to do something, work for a marketing agency um, that does work in social media and digital branding and, um, you know, works with services like airlines or banking. Do you know anybody? Well, I wouldn't know that much. If I would do some, some work for an agency that does, you know, campaigns on social media or TV or anything like that, do you know anybody who works there? She might think, oh, I have a neighbor down the street or I have a cousin who I think knows somebody. If I said, I want to work at Arnold Agency in Boston or New York, and I want to work in specifically in their media communications group, she's going to be like, um, can't help you. Or if I said, mm, I've taken some marketing courses. Uh, so I think maybe I'm not sure something around advertising. The last one and the second one aren't going to help you. The first one would probably help you. Um, so that's what we're going to do. It's your best tool for presenting just the right level of detail. And it has three parts. First part is here's what I'm looking for. The second part is here's what I know, here's why I know I'll be good at it. Here's why I know I'll like it. Um, you know, this is what I've studied or this is what I've done to make me know that this is, you know, what I'm, I'm looking for. And at your level, it doesn't have to be very specific. A lab role is great answer. And then the last part is the easiest um, on paper, but sometimes the hardest to say, which is, can you help me? Do you know anyone? Can you think of a way that you can help me? Um, and then here's some examples. Um, so here's what I'm looking, I'll read, gonna read these across. Um, I'm mean, hoping to get some experience working in a lab this summer, either at a company or a university. Those are the two main avenues. Um, I wanna learn, but I also have some skills working with data and equipment and I can follow procedures based on coursework I've done. That's a really important part, by the way. And then the can help me is, do you know of any labs that are hiring for interns? And that's kind of all you need to do. And if you can memorize that and say it to everybody you meet in from church to Starbucks to the tea, you never know. I literally can tell you uh, people who have gotten jobs in every single one of those situations. Um, here's one about marketing. Um, after college, I'd like to work in marketing and would love to intern in an agency or the marketing office or, of a corporation. I'm learning about social media, how to do A-B testing, brand strategy, and I love that work. So I'd love to see it in action. Do you have any friends or relatives that work in an environment like that where they may need an intern? That would be a good elevator pitch. And then last one, I'm very interested in social justice and would really like to work with either a community organization or an advocacy group. I have experience with several organizations as a youth mentor or doing community outreach, so I know that I can add value. Adding value is something you want to try to get in as often as you can if possible. Oh, sorry, you guys. Um, uh, and then do you know of any anyone who works at one of these organizations that hires interns or would like to, would like to hire one? Um, Amy, and I, I, I just love the, the way you've laid this out because it's so important to get that down, um, you know, just as a quick, literally in an elevator, if you had, you know, a minute to tell someone what you want to do, uh, that's kind of what it is. And I, I just wanted to kind of underscore kind of column three where 
you know, obviously at the ask is an important part, but making also a distinction that you're not always asking for a job, but you're kind of asking, do you know anyone who works in this space? So it's both people who are um, part of their network who they might be able to introduce you to if they don't know anyone uh, in addition to the actual opportunity. So it's not always just asking for the internships and jobs, but it's also asking about the people who might be working in the field so you can speak to them. So one of the golden rules that I follow and someone had told me is that every time you speak with someone, get two other names that you can speak with, right? So it increases your network. You're just like, hey, you know, you don't know anyone. Is there anyone you would recommend I talk? And if you, if you get two names out of every conversation you have, your network will already start, so. Great, yeah. And, uh, go ahead, somebody. Have, I'm having trouble understanding somebody. Are you, are you near your phone? Because I'm getting feedback or near your computer. I didn't get it. I didn't hear anyone. Maybe put in the chat maybe as well. Okay, I'm gonna keep talking um, and hope hope I get some um, feedback. Not not technical feedback, but um, so um, yeah. And and and, and as Hepsi said, an elevator pitch is, is something defined as something you can finish in the in the time it takes to get your average elevator ride so quickly. So once you have, so I would recommend writing something down that might work for you, and then practicing it on your dog in the shower or any anywhere until you can just roll it off and. There's no harm done of doing it, you know, to anybody you meet. Um, which brings us to networking, um, which really scares a lot of people. Um, so the first thing I want to tell you is that networking is doing something is not just randomly talking to people. It's not something like executives in suits do at a cocktail party. It's something that anybody can do. It sounds kind of pompous, but it's not. Um, the goal of networking is specifically to get your resume forwarded internally if you have um, applied to something and the more people you know and where they work is um, gonna help you do that. Two is to learn about positions before they get posted. So the more people who are out there who know what you're looking for, who work in areas where they might learn about them, the more they are that you have a chance of that. And the third, as Pepsi said, is to identify other people that you can talk to who may be of help to you. So those three things, it's just talking to people and asking to stay in touch because you know they know that you're starting out, you need help, and they remember that when they were starting out, they needed help. So it's a really, it's not a fuzzy, horrible, scary thing. Um, it's kind of not even a social, well, it is a social skills thing, but it, it's, it's, for me, it was easier than that because a social skill could be scary, but this one has a purpose. So I hope that makes it sound more reasonable to you because it actually has a goal. It's not just random talking to people. Um, couple notes, the more people you talk to, the better your art, odds are of finding something. So talk to everybody, you just never know. Um, and use an email template. Um, again, I'm gonna have those available. There's some, I think there are some on my website on the free resources page. You're welcome to contact me, I have them. Um, again, that saves you a lot of time. You can reach out, you're, 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 one of the best things you can do if you haven't already is to get your username and, nap and password for your alumni database. I'm sure you can search on fields by people that are doing what you're interested in, what you do or what you're interested in. Um, have a template, you can send out as many as you can. Um, friends um, at, that you're at school with, um, if their parents work in the industry, if there are people that come to campus that work in the industry, if you have professors, you can send an email template. And if you get five back out of um, 25 that you send, that's a great response rate. If you don't hear from people, you don't hear from people and it's not a big deal. Everybody wants to help you. If they don't have time, that's fine. Um, and again, just like with applying, keep a record. Even when you talk to people, keep a record. Um, another thing, uh, this doesn't really apply to you guys, but um, some, some career offices have you make business cards. When you're doing this, your job isn't to give out business cards, it's to collect them. Ask people for business cards. If you give out your business card, that's not networking because you're giving it to somebody who's probably gonna put it in a drawer and never look at it again. If you get a business card, then you control how you can react and what you're gonna do with it. And you can use that business card to follow up. 
Um, any questions? I, I realized I was thought I was behind time and now I'm realized I have some time. So before I go into process mechanics, which is a little bit different, it's not about your tools, it's about what you can expect as you start to apply to these internships. Um, uh, let me ask um, what kind of questions you guys have raised or what comments or reactions you guys have. And you can either put them in the chat or let me know. Um, just let me know you're still out there, please. So while people are- We're here. Go okay. ahead. I'm still here. One question while people are thinking of their questions, Amy, I had is kind of back to the resume writing. Um, is there an ideal size for any resume? Is uh, a one page or two pager? What's, what's kind of for a, um, you know, a, an undergrad internship? What are they, you know, what is the, the suggestion? Your resume, your resume has to be one page. If it, until you are at least 10 to 15 years out of school, it will be thrown away if it's not one page. So one side of a page as opposed one to one side of not one a double sided page. page, right? So one, which side, means, one page, use all the room, use all the space, yeah. but it's only one page. Yeah. So which means that it really forces someone to pick up only the relevant experience and put it down. So, you know, awards and whatever you may have had a ton as a student or publications or research, but make, making those decisions to put only the relevant ones. Um, or to play around with fonts and margins, which is what That's I spend correct. an inordinate amount of time doing for fonts. That's correct. Yep. Yep. Um, how do people feel about summaries? Do people um, feel like that's, are people thinking of summaries and elevator pitches? And there's kind of a general theme. Uh, is that hitting, I mean, or as I'm talking, are, are people that far ahead, like they kind of can start just, if people can type in a yes or a no, I'd be interested to know if you guys are at a place where you can start to imagine what your, if you are gonna sum yourself up in one a sentence, um, are you at that stage? Yes, like when you was talking, um, going over the elevator pitch, I actually uh -huh. took a screenshot of the screen because the first one with the lab, it applies to me like, now that you was talking, I'm gonna go and go try to speak to some people at my college and see like, like you said, like go to some teachers and talk to my teachers and see. I'm gonna tell them like, if they know anybody that like, is want somebody to work in their lab. Great, you know? great, that's I excellent. And, uh, and um, that's Ayilton, right? Yes. So one other thing I'll tell you um, is um, keep, not only keep a record, but of who you're gonna to talk to, but who gave you the tip and who gave you the insight. I'll tell everybody who is on this session right now, you messed up by, uh, I'll tell you right now, you missed, you not you messed up, but you missed an opportunity. At the end of the last session, you missed an opportunity to, my email was the last page on this session. You missed an opportunity to send me an email and say, thank you. Um, I enjoyed the session. Here's what I would like to know more about or just, or, um, just thank you. Um, I know I'm not saying any of you are rude. I'm not saying any of you did anything wrong. But what I do want you to think about is that um, mo I'll tell you, uh, I probably get from my own alma maters, maybe 50, 60 calls a year and the number of people, and I'm happy to talk to anybody, number of people who and at the end of every call I say please let me know where you land please let me know what happens I'm really interested you know how many people call me back maybe two a year two two maybe five in five years so it's you a one way I can tell you to really stand out is to circle back and make sure that if you get an internship from one of those professors, make sure you circle back and let them know and thank them. A lot of people forget that step, not because they're rude, they're rude, not because there's anything wrong. It's just totally natural and human to forget that step. And it's, which means it's a really good opportunity. So if I want you to tell you guys one thing that you remember five years from now, I wanna tell you that because it, you, it's, it seems really commonsensical, but nobody does it. So it's a real, it's a great news for you because it's a really good way to, um, to let yourself stand out. And, um, you know, I've had, I've had the, I've done um, 
two two resumes for people that I've talked to post um, post rent and they they got individual resumes. Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time to do them for I'm not gonna have time to do them for everybody. But you know those guys, I was I was really able happy to get to know them because they reached out afterwards and I was thrilled to you know get to know them. But um, I and I, I know I'm 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 encouraging you to be in touch with me as well, and I do. But I also want to make the point: circle back with people. Um, and that's another really important part of why I'm telling you to keep a record too. Um, so, all right, I'm off my soapbox. Um, sending it via email or text or anything is right. Yeah, you don't have to bake cookies. Just a note or an, an email is fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna switch to process mechanics. Um, and if everybody, um, unless anybody wants to say anything else quickly or send, okay. Um, I said this already, it's a numbers game. Apply to as many internships as possible. Um, you can apply to a set of A internships, a set of B internships. Um, if you can apply to, you know, some, some things that aren't, that work, that would be, you know, not necessarily going to be career generating um, power, but are going to be work. Any work is good work. Um, uh, I'll, I'll come back to that in a second if we have time. Um, don't turn yourself down for anything you lose 100% of the swings you don't take. Um, don't forget that. So a lot of my clients, a lot of people when they come to me, they, they, they try to talk themselves out of something. Um, oh, I don't know if that if I would wanna to go to that part of town. I would know somebody worked there, they didn't like the people, they were snobby. Um, you never know. And, and, it, and it is about the people. You guys are in college, you know, sometimes it's not the course, it's the professor. Sometimes a job that sounds not very good on paper could have fantastic people. So apply for everything. You just never know. Um, being fast matters. If you see something come up, if you get a, you know, if you, if you go to Indeed and you set up an alert to look for um, lab internships, which by the way, you can do in Boston, um, and you get, you'll get a bunch of stuff that isn't really lab internships. So you don't be, you'll get an email every morning with like 10 or 20 things in it, only like maybe one or three, one to five a week will be things you're interested in, but you can do that. Um, be quick. As soon as you see something come up, apply for it because being number one in the pile is better than being number 100 in the pile, no matter who you are. Um, or it can be, it can be better, it, earlier is better. Um, and then, as I said earlier, again, sometimes they check your social, um, your digital profile. So follow the company if you apply to it on social media or LinkedIn or anything once you apply, because it may matter. I had a client get a job in the last couple of months because she liked a post that the um, CEO had published on LinkedIn. And he did a search to see how many of the names of the candidates had liked his post or were following him. And that brought it to like 10 candidates and she got the job. So you just never know. It's a good thing to thing to do. Um, would, be prepared. Quick question uh, uh -huh. on on kind of the speed of of wanting to respond. I think that's a it's an important one. Would you kind of then recommend, um, you know, obviously at, at this stage in most of our um, students, um, you know, careers, they're looking at maybe multiple things, maybe a lab position, maybe a you know, uh, you know, some kind of a biotech company, maybe something else. So they're kind of uh, versions of your resume. So would you recommend kind of having, you know, two or three versions and two or three versions of cover letters? So depending on what the opportunity is, you're kind of ready to to kind of respond quickly. Yeah, um, I think um, if it's all um, if it's all lab, then you maybe one's an academic and one's a company. You could do two. Right. But I do recommend um, most of one template that you, um, you're you using the resume to maybe change a few keywords from the job description and a cover letter that has that customizable sentence at the top uh, specifically about the opportunity and the customizable sentence specifically at the bottom about the company is all you need. Um, so most people um, really just need one unless they're applying to a specific categories of jobs. So, right. um, so it, yeah, um, I guess it, 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 if it's, you're very focused on one type of job and the environment's different. Um, uh, uh, but most roast resumes and cover letter packet, you know, as one can be customized. So one will can cover a lot of stuff. Got it. Um, when asked basic questions, I got the, get these questions a lot. I, what do I put for a salary? Um, what should I put about a start date? 
be honest. You don't want to waste anybody's time. This doesn't matter so much for you guys, but you know, starting full time. Um, if they ask you how many hours of work can you week, how many hours a week can you work? Be honest. You know, don't say twenty if you can only do five. Um, uh, you know, anything. You know, how many weeks during the summer can you work? Be honest. Don't waste anybody's time. It's not in your interest or theirs. So, um, you should have an idea of how much you want to make for the summer. Um, if it's nothing, that's great. Um, you should have an idea. If you know when you're, if you take in vacation, if you have any kind of commitment, um, you know, family commitment, professional, you know, academic commitment, anything, you want to be able to understand those before you go in and then be honest about it. Um, also, um, sometimes you'll get a software. I don't know if they do this for interns all the time. It's becoming more and more common. A software about your work style or your personality. Um, don't worry about those. They're really just trying to see whether you'll fit into the culture. Some of them are pretty obvious. They'll, you know, be like, are, are you a person who, you know, has to be better than everyone else in the office? Are you ultra competitive or are you more collaborative? And it's kind of like, oh, you know, who wants to hire basically an asshole who's super competitive and you, it's not really that much of a question, but, um, you know, don't try to game the software is what I'm saying. Just be honest about it. Some of them are skills-based and, you know, you can't, you shouldn't um, stress about that either because you don't want to go into an environment where you are um, uh, not at the right skill set to do it for six weeks. You'll be miserable, but most of them are just personality and don't worry, don't stress about it at all. Um, okay, um, a little bit about after applying. Um, there are a thousand reasons why you never hear back. None of them are that you're a terrible candidate. Every company where you apply, the CEO would like to reach out to you personally and thank you for applying. That could not happen. Um, and there are so many different reasons. I mean, your application, companies just don't run like clockwork. Your application could get um, picked up by someone who's like, oh, this person went to UMass Boston. I'm just going to let so-and-so know in that department that someone from their, alum their um, uh, alma mater is applying. And it gets sent to Susie's desk. And Susie's like, oh, that's cool. But she never sends back or calls you. And then you're kind of sidelined. It can be as simple as that. It can be, as, it can be seriously that like, oh, these are the people we are looking for somebody who had this specific skill and these people aren't and here you you figure out a way to get in touch with these people but nobody has time because everybody in every corporate job everywhere right now has 50 things to do and two hours to do them in so um it's not it, it could be a, as simple as a, a one skill that they were looking for it could be as simple as a weird thing that happened um it could be that they just don't have time to get back to you. It could be, and this happened to me, a client of mine, they applied for a job at Pixar um, in October, heard nothing, figured like, eh, whatever. In May, they got a call and they had a job two weeks later. So you just never know. Like another reason to keep a record and do not feel bad. If you don't hear back, you didn't hear back. That's why it's a numbers game. That's why you keep applying. Um, if you get a call, if you do get a positive response, you're likely going to have a phone screen with a recruiter, um, or it's going to be very simple. They're going to walk through your resume. They're going to ask you a couple of questions, and then you're going to get a longer interview with probably um, what are called behavioral questions, which are things like, um, you know, tell me about a time you worked on a group project and what role did you play? That, that kind of thing. Or a technical question, which would maybe be something where, you know, they'll tell you about something that they're doing in a lab and, you know, ask, you know, if they asked you to do this, is that something you could do or how would you approach it? Um, those are probably more intense for, I doubt for an internship, it would be anything that was that intense, but in general, that's kind of like how interviewing works if, um, as an overview. Um, something not everybody does or knows, you're always allowed to ask what next steps are. So if you get a call or if you have an interview, do not hang up and think, oh, what's going to happen next? Say, thank you so much for your time. I, I'm really excited about the process. I thank you so much. And I, I'm wondering what's the next step. And they, it's their obligation to tell you, you know, we're seeing candidates for two weeks. We'll, hear, we'll let you know in two weeks. Or you're the final candidate. There's three of you. We, we should know by early next week. You should get off that call or um, with an understanding of a time frame of when you can expect to hear from them again. And that's your right. Um, you're also always allowed to ask, with, end with, 
what else can I say? What else can I tell you about myself that would strengthen my candidate? Or do you have any doubts about my candidacy? And you may not get anything. They might be like, oh no, everything's fine. But they might say, well, I'm a little worried about this. Or no, you did great. Um, you know, you never know you, what you'll get with that answer, but you're always allowed to ask it. Um, and then lastly, we'll get into this more when we talk about interviewing, but the you're, you're going to be worried a lot about focusing on answering questions, but equally as important are going to be the questions that you ask. So when you prepare for an interview, and we'll talk about that next time, you're going to have some want to have some good questions related to the job description and what you're going to be doing that show you, kind of, you really kind of understand what you're going to be getting into. So if you do have lab experience and you're going to be going into a lab job, you're going to want to say, what kind of equipment do you work with? And how many project, how many people on a team or how many projects would I work on at a time? Or what's an example of a project so you can start a conversation about it? Um, and um, so the questions you ask, the, the questions you want to know the answer to are, of course, always the best questions you want to ask. But you can absolutely prepare a set of questions. I highly recommend it. And you're absolutely allowed to have a list of questions that you can refer to and say, you know, I, I, I prepared these questions in advance. It's a death knell in an interview to have somebody say, um, uh, uh, do you have any questions? And say, nope because it's a sign of lack of interest. So you always want to have a lot of questions. Um, OK, uh, let's see. We're almost at the end. Next time, we're going to talk about interviews and elevator pitches and networking, and we're going to practice it. Um, and I'm happy to do examples with people. So if anybody wants to get the most out of this session, let me know in advance, and we'll get involved with a specific issue or maybe something a specific interview you have or somebody you want to talk to. Um, these are the dates. And um, we're going to be um, uh, doing developing your skills as opposed to your tools, which was today. And then we're going to do one on making the most of your internship. So here's a bunch of information. Um, my email, um, my website, and my phone. Um, if you want to follow up, and I, I encourage you to, I have more material that's available on a more detailed level, um, both on my website and that I can send to you. Um, and um, then there's some information about the Anaya Tipness. We'd love your feedback. And then there's um, uh, some information about how to get the recording. Um, so with that, I think I will turn it back to Hepsi and I'll thank all of you for your attention. And I hope that you found this valuable. Great, thank you so much, Amy. Um, so I've posted in the chat uh, as well as here, the two, two links, one is uh, basically um, love your feedback. We're always looking to, you know, continue these sessions, improve upon them, add more sessions. What would you love to hear about at, in addition to those uh, workshops already scheduled? Um, there's also a link uh, on the slide, but in the chat that takes you to a page on uh, the uh, website that will have a recording of the session. It also has the examples that Amy um, shared today um, on, on just uh, resume and as well as cover letter. So I know uh, someone took a screenshot, but you can go there and actually look at it in more detail. Um, so feel free to do that. Um, I know we're kind of at time, but we can take maybe one question if there is, and then we can close out. Come on, guys. <laughs> okay, um, I have a question. Great. For the future, because I'm not thinking about applying to any jobs at the moment, but in the future I am, mm -hmm. would you be able to like um, do a one-on-one -on -one session? You know, um, I'm happy to, um, fo please follow up with me. And I think I'd, I'm happy to do a webinar um, uh, with a bunch of people if I get more requests than that, you know, a, a, semin a seminar or a webinar. Um, and um, I definitely, you know, can give you either more detailed time with a group of people. I actually have a book coming out next year as well. So I have a, a lot of information and I can spend, what, what are you interested in and, and when? Um, so my school, they let us go on co-ops like sophomore year. I'm, okay. I'm a freshman, so yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, Alton, yeah. So we're gonna do more of these. So I would I would just encourage you, Alton, whenever you're ready, send us an email at the workshops at an I Foundation. You can send me an email 
and we'll kind of um, address those uh, questions as and as when. We'll definitely get you the resources you need, so not to worry. We're just trying to make sure that we use Amy's time efficiently, whether it's one on one or a group of you know a small group. That that would be ideal. Yeah, okay, so next, yeah, Ayelta, next year, um, a lot of this stuff will be um, available. I'm going to have give everybody my book um, as an example, and I'll probably do that as a pre-read. So maybe people won't have to, uh, this, that will be given to people in, in advance of this. And maybe we can have some time with me to work, you know, individually with, yeah. you bring your, your tools, um, then I can help with that. And I also can help with, you know, what, what you like doing and what you think the career options might be. Because a lot of the, um, the issues is that people just don't know what jobs there are. And that's a yeah. lot of the work that I do um, as well. Yeah. So I can do that yeah. session as well. And definitely time. we'll get you the help, uh, Elton. So just, just email us and, and we'll figure something out. But with that, I know we're a little over time, but thank you again, Amy, for taking time off. Uh, out of your weekend schedule and for everyone for joining. Uh, look forward to seeing you at the next session. If you have any questions in between, uh, between now and then, uh, shoot us an email, workshops at amy at iofoundation.org or send one to Amy or myself. Thanks everyone, enjoy the rest of the weekend. My Take pleasure, care. bye everybody. Bye. bye. bye.